Is it possible to actually make money by just rounding up your daily coffee purchase and investing the change? Who knows? Maybe. It's a nifty idea. An idea that's led so many people to investing with micro-investing platforms like Ray's, like Comsec Pocket, where the message they want to send is simple. Basically, it boils down to making investing so easy that anyone can do it. But when you actually look into these platforms, for most people, these claims could only be true if by investing, they meant losing money. Let me explain. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some micro-investing platforms that in specific situations can actually offer something to the everyday investor without royally screwing you behind the scenes. But these situations are far less common than they should be. And for some reason, barely anyone is speaking about it. And it seems the dangers of these platforms are going either unnoticed or willfully ignored. And although this is definitely not financial advice, I do have some of my own concerns about these platforms and I'll show you about them now. So I've already mentioned Raise and Comsec Pocket, but the line for what constitutes a micro-investing platform these days is kind of blurred. As the name suggests, one of the main ways we can differentiate one of these platforms is based on how much money you need to start investing. With some of the more popular micro-investing platforms, you can invest with literally cents. But one of the more well-known micro-investing platforms, Comsec Pocket, has a minimum of $50. And if you were to follow this logic, then that could mean one of our partners, Stake, which allows you to start investing with as little as $10, could technically fall into this category. However, Stake have publicly stated that they don't want to be grouped in with micro-investing platforms. So maybe a better defining feature would be the types of investments they offer. What you'll find is they usually have a much smaller pool of investments to choose from usually pre-mixed options or things like ETFs. And when you compare that to other trading platforms like Stake and eToro, they offer in Stake's case, thousands of stocks and ETFs and eToro offer not only stocks and ETFs, but indices, cryptocurrencies, commodities, just to name a few. So you can see when you compare this to something like Spaceship Voyager, which has three investment options to choose from, it is much simpler and a lot easier to get your head around if you are a beginner. Now, other than that, I have to admit there are a couple features included in some of these micro-investing platforms that do sound appealing. For example, quite a few of them do offer regular automatic investing, where if you were gonna follow a simple dollar cost averaging strategy like myself, which I explain in this video, then having a feature like this would actually be super useful. So at this point, you may be thinking, well, micro-investing doesn't sound that bad. But that's pretty much where the good news ends. To explain what I'm talking about, let's have a look at one of the most popular micro-investing platforms, Raise. You've probably heard of Raise, formerly known as Acorns, and they're actually behind the Roundup investing feature I mentioned at the beginning of the video. From what I can tell, it's likely one of their main selling points, probably the feature that brings in a lot of new investors. But for something that's so promising as a concept, in reality, after most investors try this out, they're probably gonna wish they never did. Let me show you what I mean. This is a video live on Raise's YouTube channel right now. This explains how the roundup process works. As you can see, these are standard bank transactions made by a Raise customer. And in this example, for every transaction made, Raise will invest the difference between the purchase amount and the nearest dollar. So as you can see here, they made a purchase for $89.76 at a pharmacy. So in this case, they'll be investing 24 cents. And most people at this stage, including me, probably think, wow, this process looks pretty cool. I don't really need to think about it, but in the background, I'm actually investing every time I make a transaction on my card. But check this out. Using this video, we can see the transactions of this customer from the 6th of August to the 10th of August. And if we add up the amount invested across those five days, we get $2.44. Because we can't see the transactions across the entire week, let's just assume that the remaining two days were equivalent to that of the biggest day we could see, which was actually the 10th, and that was 75 cents. That would bring the total amount to be invested for this week to $3.94. Then if we multiply that by four, we get $15.76 being invested every single month. But whoa, don't get ahead of yourself. Rays actually impose a $3.74 and 50 cent management fee every month. So in order to actually invest that, you'll need to fork up $19.26. 
Yikes. At least we'll be investing in the market, right? So what sort of returns can we expect from these portfolios? Well, although Rays don't have the longest track record, here you can see the performance of each of their seven options. Let's assume for argument's sake, you were to invest in their best performing option over the last three years. That would be their Emerald option, which has an annualized return of 12.44%. So if we chuck this example into our trusty compound interest calculator, after one year, we'd have $202.36, which isn't nothing, but if we just put the full $19.26 per month into a high interest savings account, earning 1.2%, for example, then we would have $232.63, more than $30 more. In fact, if you kept up this exact same strategy, you wouldn't actually earn more than just plonking that money into a savings account until four years later. Now I know this was a super simplified example and it definitely is self-serving, but I don't think this scenario laid out is too far from what a lot of investors do experience with this sort of micro investing. At the end of the day, the figures that we used were from their website and given how they're marketing their platform, it's supposed to be for beginner investors, those who likely don't have a thousand dollars to invest with at any one go, which when you do the maths really is the only way these types of investments with fees taken into account actually make sense. I mean, we simply have to look at the other biggest player in the space, Comsec Pocket, to prove my point even further. As you can see, while they don't have an ongoing management fee, they charge users $2 every time they buy in or sell out of one of their investment options. So again, being that they target newer investors and the minimum amount you can invest with on their platform is $50, that $2 brokerage fee represents a 4% loss straight away immediately as you buy in. Not even considering the fact that when you sell, you have to pay another $2. And the sad thing is, is that in a lot of cases, when you look on their dashboard, on either of these apps, they don't show the fees that you're paying as part of the return calculation. So although the market and the money that you actually can invest at the end of the day may be earning 7%, 10% year over year, when you account for the fees that are taken out beforehand, the actual money that you put into this endeavor to begin with, you're usually at a loss. Now, I don't wanna give off the wrong idea. Obviously, the perceived motivation of these companies being that they want to make investing more accessible to the everyday person is a great thing, and I will always champion that. The problem that I have with how these platforms have gone about it is that for most beginner investors, investors who don't have a lot of money to invest with, it is almost guaranteed to lose the money just based on how low the minimums are and how high the fees can be. But it's not only that. From what I can tell and to give my two cents, any company that endeavors to open up investing, to make it more accessible and easier to people who don't have a lot of money, they have to perform quite the balancing act. On one hand, they have to break down the idea that investing is only for the wealthy, those who have been trained in finance, while also making sure that their users do have the necessary knowledge and emotional resilience to ride the wave of the stock market. There are gonna be times when your money dips and it's not like a savings account where the returns are guaranteed. So if we're making investing platforms so easy to invest in that people are jumping in the deep end without understanding the risks involved and that there may be times where the market drops, then we run the risk of those who have motivation jumping in too early, experiencing a drop in the market, panic selling and being deterred from investing in the future. But yes, I think it's about time we stop the complaining there. If any of you guys have used Raised, Comsec Pocket, any other micro investing platform, please let me know your opinions, your thoughts. If you disagree with anything I've said, put them down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your experiences and get a conversation going. Other than that, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to go down and click the like button and check out one of our other videos. See ya.